Good morning, YouTube. This is Colin. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Genetics. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk about my girl, Evoltra, here. And Evoltra, the name may uh, imply, is a Volta. Uh, this is a often talked about locality of ball python. Now normally, ball pythons are not known for localities. They are known for morphs. As you can see, if you can see in this lighting, the vulture here is a normal ball python. As far as I know, she's not even carrying anything. No special genes. The reason I got, well, the reason I got her is someone reached out to me and said that he couldn't get her to eat and she was about to starve to death. <laughs> but the reason I was excited to get her was because she was a Volta. She's a wild caught animal out of Africa and uh, she was from the Volta region. Now we're going to go on the map here and show you what I mean by that. All, virtually all ball pythons that are brought in out of the wild and all the original stock came out of Ghana. Togo or Benin in West Africa. Um, that's on the obviously on the western side of Africa, um, on the bulge of Africa. Here, let me show you real quick. So here's West Africa on the coast. Down here, these countries: Ghana, Togo, and Benin. Most ball pythons come out of these countries. Okay, you see it's right on the coast of that's the Atlantic Ocean right here. Okay. So, um, ball pythons from a particular region called the, the Volta region in Ghana, uh, that's, so that's eastern Ghana right up against the border with Togo, uh, there's, there's a couple mountain ranges there, uh, the main mountain range I believe is called the Agumatsa mountain range, and uh, for whatever reason, ball pythons from that region are often gigantic. Uh, the females are known to be very, very large, have large clutches of eggs, and so people still target that region, uh, importers and things. And while I don't particularly like uh, bringing in wild caught animals when it's not necessary, like with ball pythons where there's hundreds of thousands of them in captivity, uh, I do understand why they go for these voltas. It's, it's very valuable to have these big uh, large females that are kind of a bloodline that has large clutches of eggs. Uh, from a breeder's perspective, I'm sure you can understand that. So, this girl here, how large do they get? That's the question lots of people always have. This girl here, as you can see, while she is still, uh, while, while she has gotten a lot uh, healthier than she was, she's still a little bit skinny. You can see uh, in her sides, Look at her from the top, she's, she's pretty skinny. Um, and yet, she is about 3,000 grams right now. She's long, very long. She has a huge head, just absolutely enormous head. Um, and her frame looks like it could happily carry twice as much weight. Not even kidding. I don't know that she'll ever get that large in my care. Uh, I don't feed heavily enough for that but she is just a big girl and and when we first got her she was i don't know 1800 grams i mean this this long uh amazingly beautiful snake here was only 1800 grams she was skin and bone and she has since uh, put on a lot of weight she's doing great for us and uh i hope she keeps putting on lots of weight for us so, uh, I want to just talk about, uh, real quick, this genetic predisposition to large size and large edge egg clutch size. Because when, when people get a Volta and they lay eggs, uh, say, say I bred, like right now, we're breeding a banana to this Volta girl, right? Uh, when she lays eggs, the eggs, the babies that hatch out will be 50% Volta. Now, in the ball python world, people hear that and they think a 50% possible het for Volta. That's what, that's what lots of people hear and think. That is not the case. 
Uh, it's not a it's not a Mendelian trait. You don't pass it down. You can't trace it with Punnett squares. It's just a strict percentage of this bloodline. Think of it. Uh, you retic people. Think of it like dwarf or super dwarf retics. If you breed a super dwarf retic, the offspring, say you bred it to a mainland, the offspring are only half super dwarf, right? They're only half dwarf. So you'd call it 50% dwarf. And you can trace how much dwarf blood is in that animal uh, and then the future generations. Even in people, um, if someone says I'm 50% black or 50% white, you're not thinking, oh, there's a 50% chance that he's black or a 50% chance that he's white. That's not how it works, right, with, with human ethnicities. It, you, you are actually half one and half the other if your parents are, are two different ethnicities. It's the same thing with these guys. Um, their babies, her babies, are going to be 50% Volta. So they will, they will absolutely have some Volta blood in them. The females especially should tend to be larger, tend to have larger eggs, or, or sorry, larger clutches of eggs. Um, and as you breed those, you know, then that offspring might only have 25% Volta and then it goes on and on and on until it really, there is not Volta anymore. But this original girl is a Volta <clears throat> and uh, her babies will all be half Volta or 50% Volta. So I just wanted to make that clear. That's a kind of a genetic misconception that some people have. It took me a minute to understand it because you get into ball pythons and you learn about, you know, dominant genes and co-dominant genes and recessive genes, but these guys don't work that way. Um, Voltas are just a, they're a locality of ball python, more like you would see in some other species. Um, and it's a, you know, she's beautiful, but she's a normal. <laughs> and, well, we would love to get some banana 50% Voltas. That's kind of the, the goal here. Uh, get some nice, big, beefy bananas. Now, she is a little skinny. She may not lay for us, and that is okay. She'll, we can fatten her up for another year and see if she'll go. Uh, she might get up to 4,000 grams before next breeding season. Uh, that would be awesome for us. So I'm just going to take the camera, zoom in on that area, so you can see what I'm talking about in, in Ghana, in Africa. And uh, let, me, let me put her back real quick in her tank. Be right back. Here is Africa. Here's West Africa. Here's the countries that we are focused on. Ghana, Togo, Benin. And in red, you see the Volta region. It's like a state of Ghana, kind of. Um, uh, you can see this massive man-made reservoir right here. Huge water reservoir. The dam powers most of Ghana and they sell power to the neighboring countries as well. Um, the, the, there's two rivers that feed that reservoir there. And here it is, there's the Volta region. So ball pythons uh, coming out of that red spot right here are Voltas. They just tend to be bigger. My girl came from somewhere in here, which I find really awesome. I'm in Alaska, and I am breeding a snake that literally began her life somewhere right here in Western Africa. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. That's the genetics of the Volta ball pythons. If you have any questions, anything I wasn't quite clear enough on, uh, go ahead and comment down below. We are happy to answer uh, or talk about anything else to do with ball pythons or reptiles in general. And uh, you can also uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. You are uh, welcome to email us at thereptilebarn at gmail.com. And we hope to hear from you there. Until next time, this is The Reptile Barn.